This is lecture set 37, Reviewing Biodiversity. So your standards for this lecture are 5E.1, which deals with how ecosystems have zone of tolerance, which determine the optimum conditions for survival, and 5E.4, where human activities can lead to biodiversity loss through overfishing, invasion by exotic species, habitat destruction, and poaching. At the end of this lecture, you should be able to identify and describe conditions that help determine an organism's zone of tolerance, compare and contrast generalist and specialist species, define biodiversity, identify methods in which biodiversity is measured, and compare and contrast non-native and invasive species. So when we talk about zone of tolerance, it is the ways in which the environment provides the proper characteristics for an organism to survive and to thrive. So the characteristics that play into zone of tolerance um, can include, but they're not limited to, temperature, pH, salinity, sunlight exposure, nutrient content, turbidity. So these are some of the most common ones. And how these characteristics interact determine the kinds of ecosystems and the kinds of habitats that are available for organisms to take over. So the range of characteristics that an organism needs in order to be able to survive and thrive is known as that organism's zone of tolerance. Um, for many kinds of organisms, a change in their environment outside of that zone of tolerance can be lethal. So you can put them in the optimal zone, which is their zone of tolerance, put them too far below it, too far above it, and you put them into stress. If you go even further, you put them into what's called the zone of intolerance, and that is the lethal zone. So there are several kinds of organisms that have evolved to deal with specific kinds of zones of tolerance. So organisms that have evolved to exist in a broad zone of tolerance um, are known as generalist species. Um, so they have a very wide range of optimal conditions for them. Organisms that are generalist species are better adapted because they can survive in these larger ranges of conditions. Um, on the other hand, you have specialist species who have developed a very narrow zone of tolerance, which means they require very specific characteristics um, in order to survive. And generalist and specialist species are often defined um, by their niche. You may have heard it pronounced niche. The proper pronunciation is niche. Um, and this is the role that an organism plays in its, in its ecosystem. Um, niches can be fundamental, uh, meaning that these are all the roles that the organism can play or realized, which is the actual role that the organism plays in its environment. Generalist species have a wire, wider niche breadth and specialist species tend to have a much narrower one. So we talk about biodiversity. Um, it is one of the measures of a healthy ecosystem. And biodiversity is the measure of the number and kinds of organisms that are present in an ecosystem or habitat. The more biodiverse an ecosystem or habitat is, the more complex the food webs are, the healthier the ecosystem can be. So biodiversity is measured using several mathematical formulas, um, all of which kind of take into account um, one of several characteristics of biodiversity. So to start with, uh, two of these characteristics include species richness and species evenness. Species richness is the measure of how many different organism species are found in a particular ecosystem. Species evenness is the relative proportion of those organisms to each other, or is it a, it's a measure of whether or not the ecosystem is dominated by one species or another. 
So if you look here, you see two different ecosystems um, with two communities, community A and community B. Both communities are species rich in terms of the number of different species. Um, they all have four different species. Um, however, community A has a lower species evenness because it is dominated by the yellow mushrooms. Community B, however, has uh, a much higher species evenness because they appear to be pretty evenly distributed throughout the community. We can also look at biodiversity in terms of the level of diversity. Um, by that we mean biodiversity of the ecosystem, in the number of species, and in the genetics of the species. Um, so these are methods to identify biodiversity in an area. So in terms of ecosystem, we're looking at the number and type of ecosystems that are available in an area and that are considered healthy. Species biodiversity is a measure of the number of species that are present. And genetic biodiversity is a measure of the genetic variability um, within the organisms in a particular species. So when we talk about biodiversity, we have to talk about the things that are going to affect biodiversity. Um, human impacts can um, change biodiversity in ways that are far reaching and that we cannot always predict. Um, and we'll talk about those specific interactions in a later lecture. In terms of uh, natural factors that will affect biodiversity, um, we define them as either factors that will increase biodiversity or factors that will decrease biodiversity. So in increasing biodiversity, we're looking at those things that are going to create a physically diverse habitat, um, provide moderate environmental disturbance, such as cyclical wildfires, um, provide small variation in environmental conditions. So the climate is relatively constant. The precipitation is relatively constant. Um, we're in the middle stages of ecological succession and we have evolution occurring in that area. Factors that will decrease biodiversity um, include environmental stress, so pushing organisms outside that zone of tolerance, large environmental disturbances, extreme conditions, um, severe limitations of an essential resource, the introduction of a non-native species, or geographic isolation. In particular, we're going to talk about non-native versus invasive species. Um, so the introduction of a non-native species is a common thing that will affect biodiversity. Um, a non-native species is a species that is not indigenous um, or naturally occurring in a particular ecosystem. Um, it has been brought in from another area. Um, when we talk about non-native species, we really talk about them in two separate categories. Um, we talk about just the non-native, um, which is not indigenous and it comes from another area, and an invasive species. Um, an invasive species is a non-native that carries a much bigger environmental impact um, than just a simple non-native species. So in order to be considered invasive, uh, you have to meet three basic categories. So you have to be non-indigenous, um, so you have to be a non-native. You have to have no natural predator in that new ecosystem. And you must outcompete a native species. If you meet those three things, you are considered an invasive species. Um, so good examples of invasive species include the cane toad in Australia, kudzu and stink bugs in the southeastern United States, and the zebra mussel in the Great Lakes area. Go back through the lecture, through your notes, make sure that you can um, meet all of these different objectives and let me know if you have questions.